Hey guys, what's going on? I hope you all are doing well today. Elliot here, welcome back to The Fragrance Well. So what are we talking about today? Uh, I think like most people, I do enjoy, should I say, wearing fragrances that are relevant to the current to upcoming season. Right now that would be winter going into springtime. Uh, this is one of those years where springtime is kind of poking its head out and then it goes back and hides in its corner because right now some of you guys are getting winter temperatures. Sorry if you're in that camp. Even here in Central Florida, uh, it, overall it is springtime, but we're still getting some pretty cool like mornings and evenings. So I wouldn't say it's full blown spring as of yet from a temperature standpoint, but for the most part, people look forward to wearing spring fragrances when the springtime comes around. But let's just say sometimes you don't wanna quite move on just yet and you still might wanna wear a cool weather fragrance. That's the focus of today's video. I've got eight fragrances here that are cool weather scents that I still like to wear even as it is warming up outside. A couple of stipulations I might put on a fragrance that I would put in this category, it has a lot of the classic cool weather notes and or ingredients and smell profiles with them. However, they maybe aren't necessarily ridiculously heavy or ridiculously dense, really uh, thick fragrances. They might still have a little bit of a light characteristic to them, and I'm not saying that they're weak. So like I said, I've got eight of them, so let me share what they are. But before we move on, as always, please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you do like the content, and please hit that bell icon and enable notifications so you can be notified when I upload new videos. Let's get into it. All right, let's get it started. First off, from the house of Amwaj, we've got Boundless. Amwaj, Boundless. Now, if you know anything about this fragrance, it's kind of vanilla centered, but it also features a lot of resins and woods, uh, tobacco, uh, some spices. This is a really, really, really nice, uh, what I would consider primarily a cool weather fragrance. The thing about this one is, this is kind of when Amwaj kind of shifted directions a little bit in terms of making just those ridiculously powerful fragrances and pulling them back just a little bit. They're not weak, they're just not necessarily room fillers. This is one of those first ones that did that. I think as a result, kind of uh, skated under the radar a little bit, but this is a lovely uh, fragrance. Like I said, features vanilla, but it's vanilla that's not really super rich. It's just kind of this uh, natural vanilla smell that hasn't uh, had a bunch of sugar added to it. And again, it features resins and woods and tobacco, really this oriental kind of woody resinous base. And it opens up with uh, blood orange and some fresh spices and a little bit of Elemi resin. Because this fragrance does not have that very dense and overpowering characteristic to it, I think it could be worn even when it starts to warm up a little bit outside. So that's why I put this one on the list. Once again, from the house of Amwaj, this is Boundless. Next one's coming from the house of Givenchy. This is gonna be Gentleman Eau de Parfum Boise. Givenchy Gentleman Eau de Parfum Boise or just Gentleman Boise. So if you're familiar with this one from the Gentleman line, this is actually the one that has, uh, outside of the society ones, has what I consider to be the least amount of iris. This one kind of turned the iris down a little bit, turned up the woods and gave it kind of this dry, woody, smoky, uh, feature to the fragrance, just giving it a little bit of a different vibe where it's not as forward with the iris. Now, in my opinion, Gentleman Intense is the one that's kind of mostly suited for warmer weather as well as the original 2017 Gentleman, but this one here is still kind of cool weather centered because it's heavy on the woods, but the woods are not overly overpowering and because that iris is turned down with it, I think you can still wear this when it starts to warm up outside. Uh, in my opinion, this one here, uh, kind of has the least amount of push off the skin compared to the other gentleman fragrances. So it's one that may not necessarily be overbearing and can still be worn in warmer temperatures, even though it has a cold weather vibe to it. Once again, from the house of Givenchy, this is Gentleman Eau de Parfum Boise. Next up from the house of Histoires de Parfums, this is Noir Patchouli. Histoires de Parfums Noir Patchouli. Now patchouli is used in all types of different fragrances, but when it's the feature note that typically makes it what is considered to be a cool weather fragrance, this one is no different. It's kind of earthy and spicy, really has a very traditional take on patchouli. It's not gonna be for everyone, I'm gonna be honest. However, it's not overly earthy compared to say like a, um, a Javoy Psychedelic. That is a very earthy representation of patchouli. This one's a little bit brighter than that and also has quite a bit of musk 
uh, supporting the patchouli. Matter of fact, when the fragrance dries down, I find it to be pretty much a musk fragrance when you really get deep into the dry down. But this fragrance, while it is heavy on those or that earthy patchouli vibe, it has this kind of lightness to it that I think can still be worn in warmer weather. So if you wanna wear a patchouli fragrance, when it starts to warm up without it being too overpowering, this might be one worth checking out. Once again, from the House of Histoires de Parfums, this is Noir Patchouli. Next up, we got one from the House of Ramon Monagal. This is gonna be next to me. Ramon Monagal next to me. So this one here actually has some warm weather centered notes in it. It opens up with this coconut peach vibe to it, which really makes me think that this fragrance has a lot more versatility than many of the other characteristics about it let on. Because once it kind of gets past that and once it dries down, it's quite smoky, it's incense-y, it has uh, some heavy resins in it and kind of this overall dry woodiness to it and that's pretty much the bulk of the fragrance it kind of stays that way once the peach and coconut settles in a little bit it doesn't go away completely to me but it just kind of calms down but uh with all that being said the fragrance i don't find to be overly heavy i don't find it to be too overbearing but that doesn't make it weak this fragrance lasts all day on my skin but it just doesn't have this overall weight to it that i think makes it too much if you're wearing it when it's a little bit warmer out i've actually worn this quite frequently when it has been warm out and i've enjoyed every bit of it i never felt like it was overbearing and you know i do watch my sprays but i don't get the sense that i was being overbearing to anybody else either. So once again, from the house of Ramon Monagal, this is next to me. All right, next one's gonna be coming from the house of Parfums de Marley. This is gonna be Halton. Parfums de Marley's Halton, or Haltain, however it's said. I, I don't know, I like to say Halton. Anyway, this one here, if you're familiar with it, you know this is kind of Parfums de Marley's take on an oud for greatness DNA. Presented in a slightly more masculine way, this one has some very nice aromatics off the top by way of a uh, clary sage, lavender, and it has that oud for greatness DNA at the base of it, but a little bit more masculine with uh, maybe more of a focus on the woods and a little bit of a leather accord in this fragrance. I find this fragrance to definitely not be weak, uh, definitely last all day on my skin, but again, it doesn't have that thickness to it that I think can sometimes be too much if you are wearing it in warm weather. And I've worn this plenty in warm weather. I've never had any problems with it. Again, I don't, you know, spray the crap out of it, but I do think this fragrance can work in warmer weather. Um, now again, this is subjective. You know, some people might disagree with me, might not want to wear something like this. When it is starting to warm up outside, might not be your first choice, but I've enjoyed wearing this in warm weather, so that's why I'm presenting it here. Once again, from the House of Parfums de Marley, this is Halton. All right, next one's coming from the house of Nasamato. This is gonna be Black Afghano. Nasamato, Black Afghano. Now, I already know this one is completely subjective uh, in terms of what mu some people might think of this fragrance. It's incredibly smoky. It's very heavy on the resins. It's quite woody. There is an underlying sweetness that definitely comes out as the fragrance dries down, but there's nothing about this that suggests it would be a warm weather scent. The only reason I'm saying I wouldn't mind wearing it as it warms up is because I have worn it when it's been a little warmer out and I didn't find it to be too much, me personally. And this is one that, you know, in my opinion, you never, even if it's cold out, you never have to go heavy on the sprays with this. It's a very powerful scent. Uh, and I find that, you know, by adjusting the sprays a little bit, it can be just fine. Cause I find that uh, the brassness of this fragrance definitely tames down quite a bit once the fragrance dries down. It gets really sweet in my opinion and quite enjoyable from that perspective. But again, this is all subjective. I can understand that people disagree with me on this, but for me personally, I don't mind wearing this even as the temperatures warm up. Once again, from the house of Nasamato, this is Black Afghano. Moving on, next one's gonna be coming from the house of Goldfield and Banks. This is gonna be Purple Suede. Goldfield and Banks, Purple Suede, also known as Blueberry Lavender, as I like to call it. And honestly, it's that lavender that makes me think that this one can be worn in warm weather. Now I will say, out of all the fragrances I got, I do think this one kinda has the most weight represented here, maybe other than uh, Black Afghano, because uh, the leathery aspect of this is quite strong. And it does have some animalic notes supporting that leather. I don't find them to be overbearing, but they're definitely there. But that lavender, fruity lavender feel that is in this fragrance, it kind of sticks around even though the leather is kind of the real bulk of this fragrance, that woody leather feel that this one has. So again, a little bit subjective with this one. I don't 
think everyone would necessarily agree, especially when you start talking about leather. Most people are not looking to wear a leather fragrance when the temperature starts going up. But I think this one can work if you're a little bit more experimental with that, you know, temperature blurring in your fragrance choices like I am. Once again, from the house of Goldfield and Banks, this is Purple Suede. All right, last but not least, coming from the house of Tom Ford, this is gonna be Tobacco Oud. Tom Ford, Tobacco Oud. Now, I normally would not have put this on a list like this, but I wore it last weekend in a similar scenario, and you know what? I enjoyed it, and I didn't think it was too much. So now Tobacco Oud is a fragrance I don't mind wearing when it's a little bit warmer out. Now, I'm not gonna say I'm gonna wear it in the summertime, but right now, I wouldn't mind wearing this in temperatures like it is now. This one can be a little strong when you first spray it on, uh, particularly with that whiskey and that oud and that strong ashy tobacco nature that this fragrance has, but I find that once this dries down, it gets a lot smoother, more of a spicy, woody feel. The ashiness of the tobacco is still there, but it's not quite as in your face, and that whiskey aspect has kind of subsided. Uh, and I think that's kind of why I wouldn't mind wearing this uh, when it is warmer out because the aggressive nature of this fragrance, like most fragrances when you first spray them on, it just settles down quite a bit once the fragrance has been on your skin for a little while. And I don't find it to be overbearing. Yes, it is brash, it can be a little bit in your face, but it's not really a dense fragrance in my opinion. So once again, from the house of Tom Ford, this is Tobacco Oud. All right guys, we have reached the end of this video. That was eight fragrances that I do not mind wearing once it starts to warm up, even though they are considered to be cold weather fragrances. Let me know down in the comments below, do you have any fragrances that you like to wear that fit this category? Looking forward to seeing what you guys have to say. Thanks again for watching all the way into the end. Really do appreciate you guys. Please remember to be well and smell well, and I'll see you in the next episode of The Fragrance Well. Have a good one.